Hey everyone, welcome back. Now you may or may not have heard of this, but uh, Polygon was recently hacked over a critical bug that put all 9.2 billion Matic tokens in the circulating supply at risk. And during a frantic 48 hours, malicious hackers ultimately made off with 800,000 Matic tokens. Now, here's the thing. Polygon didn't tell the public about this incident for an entire month and now lots of people are angry. And I wanted to give you the full story, it's quite interesting and you might walk away a little bit shocked. Alright, let's dig in. Okie dokie, so on December the 3rd, around 10 a.m. London time, which by the way is around 2 a.m. Uh, on the US West Coast, 5 a.m. on the East Coast, and around 9 p.m. here in Sydney, a white hacker raised the alarm about a bug on Polygon's Genesis smart contract. Now, six hours later, uh, the Polygon team confirmed the vulnerability, right? It was a critical level bug that put the entire circulating supply of around 9 billion Matic tokens, worth about $20 billion at the time, at risk. Now they had to update the mainnet as soon as possible and it was going to be an emergency hard fork. <laughs> now over the next 30 hours, the team frantically coordinated their fix with validators on the Polygon testnet uh, in preparation for the emergency mainnet rollout. Now on December the 4th at around 2pm uh, London time, uh, which was around uh, 27 hours after the white hacker first raised the alarm, the Polygon team ran out of time. Right? A hacker began exploiting the vulnerability and stealing Matic tokens. Now five hours later, a second white hat hacker raised the alarm and offered his or her assistance. Two hours after that, uh, the Polygon team informed all the validators on the network that the mainnet needed to be updated now. 10 hours after that, 90% of the validators had updated their nodes. All in all, it took less than 48 hours uh, to patch up the vulnerability. About $1.5 million worth of Matic were stolen, unfortunately. Um, but let, let's just say that it could have been a lot worse. And the two white hackers who raised the alarm, uh, they walked away with a $3.5 million bounty. Good for them. Now for the next four weeks, the Polygon team stayed quiet about their potential brush with death before announcing it in this blog post uh, on December the 29th, just before New Year's. And parts of the Polygon network were quite livid, not so much because of the vulnerability itself, because bugs and hacks are pretty commonplace in crypto. Uh, it is a software after all, and Polygon certainly had its fair share of past incidences before this one. No, many in the community were furious because of Polygon's silence, as if they wanted to maybe sweep it under the rug. You see, the crypto community is pretty sensitive to the topic of transparency, right? I mean, that's what really pure crypto is about, the decentralization, you know, returning power to the people narrative. So how can you force a hard fork down the validator's throats with no notice, right? that's a centralization issue, and hide it for a month, that's a transparency issue. Can we still trust Polygon? That's the question. And the answer is, well, we kind of have to. As it turns out, the Polygon team was actually following a policy that Ethereum itself uses. As the team explained, there's a natural tension between security and transparency, both of which are the cornerstone values at Polygon. Right? Our initial disclosure was minimal because we follow the silent patches policy introduced and used by the Geth team. Geth, by the way, is Go Ethereum, the software Ethereum validators use to run their nodes. Now it turns out that since November 2020, the policy for fixing a vulnerability on Ethereum was, they'll silently patch it up, right? Certainly they won't be announcing it on the spot, otherwise it's gonna attract malicious hackers like a pack of hyenas. And then one to two months after the silent fix, they'd publish details about what actually happened. And this is exactly what Polygon did. Beginning in December, we had the critical vulnerability. And then it was fixed within 48 hours, and then a month later it was declassified. Just like how the KGB, CIA, MI6 declassify sensitive incidences years or even decades later. So, in my opinion, I think what Polygon did was reasonable. Uh, yes, they weren't transparent, but that was for operational reasons, certainly not malicious reasons. In fact, this practice of staying silent and going undercover is also common practice for other projects, such as Monero in 2017, Zcash in 2018, and even Bitcoin in 2018 as well. Right? Back then, an anonymous user let the Bitcoin developers know that there was a serious bug with the Bitcoin core software that miners used to secure blocks. Now, two hours later, one of the developers realized that you could in theory exploit this bug to print an unlimited amount of Bitcoin. Right? Now realizing how serious this actually was, the devs kept the vulnerability under wraps while they pushed the miners to install a fix. 
And because you had thousands of nodes across the world who were all updating their nodes at different paces, in theory, the Bitcoin blockchain could have split with the unupgraded nodes continuing to add blocks to the compromised chain. And uh, something like this did actually happen 10 years ago when a hacker exploited a vulnerability that ended up minting 184 billion Bitcoins in a transaction. Now, Satoshi Nakamoto wrote up a fix in three hours after he realized or he or she realized what happened. And uh, the transaction ended up being reversed, but not before a number of unpatched nodes continued to build on this bad chain. Eventually, the good chain uh, overtook the bad chain upon which all the nodes in the Bitcoin network accepted this as the uh, source of truth. And to this day, we're still stacking blocks on this good chain. Now, remember, the way Bitcoin and Ethereum's consensus works is that it's a combination of two things, right? Proof of work and the longest chain rule, right? In other words, we use proof of work to secure new blocks on the blockchain. And the chain that's the longest is accepted as the valid one because it takes work from miners to build a chain, which incentivizes miners to not waste time, computer resources, electricity, money, adding blocks to the bad chain. Now, final piece of trivia on this value overflow incident. Uh, even though the uh, bogus Bitcoin transaction no longer exists on the current Bitcoin chain, it did leave 0.5 half a Bitcoin footprint on the current chain due to something called a faucet, which was a reward system set up during the early days of Bitcoin to try and promote uh, the adoption of the cryptocurrency. So in theory, does that mean that the maximum supply of Bitcoin is 21 million and perhaps a half Bitcoin? <laughs> All right, let's leave it there. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Uh, drop me a like and subscribe. Turn on that notification bell to stay up to date. Have a great day or evening wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next one.